Coming up on this episode of Design to the Nines, it's the Girls Can Use Power Tools Challenge, and I have got something very special planned for you. I'm going to show you how to use a wet saw to put in your very own tile backsplash in your kitchen. If that sounds good to you, stay tuned. Welcome to Design to the Nines, I'm Natalie Callahan, and if this is the first time we're meeting, welcome to my channel. If you enjoy everything from glue guns to nail guns, then I've got you covered, and I'd ask you to consider subscribing to my channel below and turning the notifications on because I bring you weekly tutorials on DIY and home decor, and I would love it if you joined me. Today is my Girls Can Use Power Tools Challenge, and I've asked Casey from Coffee With My Sunshine to be a co-host this month. And I am so excited about this episode because I've also teamed up with Floor and Decor. I'm gonna teach you how to use a wet saw. I'm gonna show you it's not as scary as you would think. You do have to be careful and mindful, but you can totally do this. So if you like the idea of girls using power tools, hit that like button below and let's get started. When it came time for me to select tile for my backsplash, I really did my homework. The best bang for the buck, that's what I'm looking for. I found the most amazing, beautiful arabesque tile. In this kitchen, I wanted something a little different. It just didn't feel like a subway tile type of kitchen. And so what I really liked about this tile were the metallic accents and how it brought the dark cabinets with the Venetian gold granite all together. And then I saw the price of $6.99. For what it is, that is a fantastic price. If we were to find the same tile in a big box store, it would be probably three times as expensive. And so I reached out to Floor and Decor and said, hey, do you want to team up to empower women to use power tools, to use a wet saw, and teach them how to put in their own backsplash? And they said, Oh yeah. So we are going to go on a field trip to my local floor and decor store. So let's go get all the supplies we need. All right. So I'm here at floor and decor. I'm ready to go inside and do a little shopping. This is like my heaven. There is so many tiles to choose from and their prices are like insanely low. Okay, so this is the one that I'm getting and I've already got it on my cart. I am so excited about it. I think I found everything I need for my project, so time to check out. So I just finished up and it was amazing. Great experience. They were really nice, really helpful and really friendly. They have free design service, so if you're like intimidated by picking out tile. They've got professionals there that can help you with your project for free. So that's amazing. So check it out. So now we've got our tile and now it's time to show you how to install it, how to use a wet saw, and I promise we can do this. Ladies, let's pull our hair back and take off all our jewelry and get to work. So I'm fortunate enough to be starting out with existing granite countertops. And these granite countertops were in it when we bought the homes. It's not necessarily one that I would have selected for myself, but it's granite. And so we're going with it and we're actually gonna make it all tie together so much better and become something that I really love. I am not a huge fan of taking tile and setting it on top of existing backsplash. I just think that that makes it look choppy and less professional looking. And so the first thing that we're gonna do is remove this existing backsplash here. We're gonna do that by taking a utility knife and scoring along the edge, just so we can get like a putty knife in and try to pry this back. So this is stuck on there really, really good. And so while my husband was on a business call, I snuck and stole borrowed <laughs> his heat gun. We're going to use this heat gun to kind of help us get this off. Be careful because this does get quite hot. All right, removing this granite backsplash is by far and away going to be the hardest part. Hopefully you don't have to do this part. Hopefully you don't have it there or you have something that is not 
like cemented onto the wall basically. It's not the end of the world. It's just gonna add a little time to our project. So while we've got our patches drying, I wanted to get the remaining silicone adhesive removed. So I patched the walls, I let it dry overnight so it's nice and sturdy. Then I sanded it down to smooth it out, as well as I sanded on top where it had been painted. So this is the tricky part with laying arabesque tile is getting the pattern layout. And I've got kind of this tricky corner here. This area needs to look good because it's gonna get a lot of visibility. What I've decided to do is go a little bit above the cabinets here so we can get a full tile and then we will get as much of a full tile as we can on this outside edge. I've spent the past little bit drawing different patterns on the wall to make sure that it turns out right and I think I've got a plan and I'm gonna start in this corner here and then go up this way. Before we can start tiling we need to unscrew these outlets and make sure the power is off to them since you're working with wet things and exposed wires. I left my more stylish glasses inside and I got these like the super cheapo ones, but the, what I like about them is they're completely sealed to my face. So I look like a mad scientist, like crazy person, but you know what would be crazy is not wearing something like this and not wearing a mask and getting something in your lungs or in your eyes. That would be crazy. So a couple of safety tips. Obviously you want to wear some protective eyewear always. And wearing a mask would be a good idea as well because you don't want anything to get into your lungs. So using a tile saw can be pretty intimidating, but it's just like any other saw. You just need to be careful Take your time, don't feel in a rush, don't feel flustered, just be calm and very hyper aware. We've got our tile saw here and we've got a tray with water in it. This lifts up and then we've got this piece right here so it stays right where we want it to. Let's get this tile cut. Let's line it up make sure it's lined up with our blade and once we've got that lined up put this down turn it on and here we go i went around and round and round trying to figure out this corner area because it's going to be tricky i think that i've got it so i'm going to actually start here i've got it traced to where i need to set it i am using Mape, Mape, I don't know if that's pronounced right, but um, type one, it's a tile adhesive. It's the stuff that's white. I prefer this for backsplashes because the gray stuff tends to just drip off the wall and make a real mess. So we're gonna take our trowel and get a little bit on there and then just on a 45 degree angle, get some of this on the wall. This trowel is a one quarter inch. This first one I'm doing kind of weird. I'm doing it weird because of, it is kind of weird. <laughs> this is not normal. How I would normally approach this is I would start on the outside edge in the area that has the most focus on it and then I'd work inward. Unfortunately, because of this bull nose area that has the drop below it, it just kind of created an interesting dynamic. So that's why I am doing this area first, but I took my time to really plan it out so I'd sure that I would have a full tile where I needed it and everything would line up. So now we're gonna take our tile and it comes in sheets. I actually cut out a section. So we will get this in here. It's really important that this first one be level because it can mess up the entirety of the rest of the project. All of this right here, since we are not ready to lay a tile there, we're gonna just scrape off and we'll just have to back butter these pieces right here. You will get messy tiling. This is a messy job that's gonna have a beautiful result. And line it up. Okay, so we've got all of our little pieces that we've cut so they can fit in here. And then we've got our little ones for up here. And so now we can start installing them. And the way we're gonna do this is by back buttering. 
And back buttering is a technique where you put the mastic on the back of the tile. I am super messy, Tyler, but in the end, it always looks good. Reason 567 why I don't have a manicure. However, after this, I think I've earned one. If I've learned anything in life, I have learned to get the hard stuff out of the way first because my natural instinct is to avoid all these tricky spots and just move on to the fun stuff. But I've learned that if you get that out of the way, it makes the fun stuff like way more enjoyable because you don't have it hanging over your head. So we're gonna take care of this now. <laughs> this is an awkward corner. I am totally gonna eyeball this. I'm probably gonna have to make more than one trip to the tile saw to get this tile right, and that's okay. There is a tool that I've been seeing online where you can kind of mold the shape of something and cut a tile off of it. I'm really wishing I had that right now. I'll show you what I'm gonna do here, and you need to be super, super careful. So we're gonna turn on the saw. And then I'm just gonna do a series of cuts, trying to meet to this line here. We've gotten the hardest cut out of the way. I am so relieved. <laughs> okay, so we have gotten through the most difficult part. I've now made several cuts and we are ready to kind of bust this out. You'll notice that I took one of these big pieces and I put it here and I removed one for the socket. And then I went ahead and pre-cut a tile that will fit right in there. Well, let's just get tiling. All right, now we get to do our first full piece. Uninhibited, no weird cuts, so let's go to town. So it's now time for me to do my little last area. I want a full piece on the outside over here, and then I also want a full piece on the outside over here so we're gonna work from the outsides in and hope that it doesn't look too funny in the corner here if it does i've got a toaster oven that goes here so you're really not gonna see the corner but we're gonna do our best so we've let the tile sit overnight and i am so excited look how pretty it is so now it's time to mix the grout and you can buy it pre-mixed and ready to go and just skip this step but it is significantly less expensive to go with the powdered grout. So that's what I'm doing today, is we're gonna mix about the amount of grout that we think that we need. If we end up needing to mix more, that's okay. So just to follow the instructions as far as the ratios of water to powder, and the ultimate end result is we're looking for the consistency of like toothpaste or peanut butter. So sticky but still easily spreadable. So there's two types of grout. There's sanded and non-sanded. I'm using non-sanded because my grout line's a little bit smaller as well as we don't want to, the sand to scratch our shine off of our beautiful metallic tile. Now it's time to start grouting. Once you start this process, you cannot stop until the job is complete. First, you are going to take your float on a 45 degree angle and move in a 45 degree pattern back and forth, pushing the grout into the cracks until it is in there nice and tight. After about 30 minutes, it will start to dry and then there will be a haze over the tile. At this point, you grab your sponge and wipe off the excess and then let it dry fully. Then you'll go back and clean it one more time. So we've let our grout fully dry and there's still kind of a haze across it. So we're gonna take some paper towels and I like to use a window cleaner. And I just spray it on, take my paper towels and you can see that beautiful metallic coming through. Now there's going to be a couple spots where grout doesn't really want to come off. You're going to take a straight edge blade and just very carefully scrape it off. It comes off super easy. Finally, you want to replace all of the electrical plates and tighten everything up. Turn back the power, do touch up paint, and then you're done.
Our backsplash is done and I am absolutely thrilled with the results. Now you may be asking yourself, why go to all that trouble? Because it's a lot of work to be honest with you. I'm not gonna lie about it, it's a lot of work. Why do it? Well, there are a couple of reasons. First is the cost savings. If we had have hired this out, it would have been around $800 to maybe $1,000 more realistically, especially considering the intricate pattern that I chose for this backsplash. When you couple it with the savings we got by buying our tile through Floor & Decor, we're looking at a savings of anywhere between $1,500 to $2,000. If you do this yourself, is a real equity opportunity. Another reason why I decided to do this is every time I walk in this room now, I get to say, I did that. It's almost like that little girl in me that is like, See mom, look what I did. Do you think that I've earned that long overdue manicure? Cause I'm thinking I did with this project. And with all of that cost savings, I can afford it. <laughs> now I'm not a professional, okay? I get that. If I can do this, you can do this. I still have all of my fingers. <laughs> No accidents, we used a wet saw and we didn't cut anything off. Have I convinced you you can do it? Let me know in the comment section below. I just wanna thank Floor & Decor for sponsoring this video, for having the vision to empower women, to use power tools, because we've got this ladies, we do. We can use the power tools. And if you think we can, let me know in the comment section below. I hope you enjoyed this episode. I hope you feel empowered. Start small, then work up to something a little bit bigger. If you found value and learned something from this video, hit the like button. And if you haven't already, subscribe to my channel and turn the notifications on because I have so many fun things. We're just starting out in the holiday season from you know, all the fall holidays and then going into Christmas. It's gonna be back to back to back fun and exciting episodes, I promise you. So I really hope you join me. Thank you so much for watching. We'll see you again soon.